this session, we'll be continuing our series on coding matters, and this particular focus will be on respiratory issues that require coding. In fact, a lot of this is really surrounding supporting that principal diagnosis. So we'll be revisiting the principal diagnosis, particularly of pneumonia and COPD exacerbations, and then linking that with secondary diagnoses, complications and comorbidities that accurately reflect the complexity of a lot of these admissions. So the three focuses for this session are going to be getting specific with the terminology and the way that we document, focus on pneumonia, which is really exploring those areas that will accurately reflect complexity, and the third one briefly talking about diagnostic certainty and how to document that accurately. So here are a bunch of specific and non-specific terms. The non-specific ones have very limited coding potential, so some of them can't be coded at all. For example, where they're just results that are recorded, things like HB85, MCP72, I would interpret that as microcytic anemia, but again, that's an interpretation uh, and, and therefore an assessment or a, or a diagnosis that's made there upon reviewing the results. Um, likewise, respiratory distress can be coded in a non-specific way that still has a diagnosis associated with it as it's more of a symptom, but if you have type 1 or type 2 respiratory failure, they are really adding more to the complexity and an accurate uh, representation of what the patient's going through. Likewise, if you have ground glass changes on CT, that's a result, it's not a diagnosis. If you link that to probable fungal pneumonia, that can be coded and that adds to complexity. So whenever we're writing these things, it can be really helpful to say this is the raw result that we're reviewing and in the impression or the assessment, we're actually documenting more specific terms like those listed here that will help us code accurately. In terms of pneumonia, uh, we've produced a sticker um, where I'm working now and uh, we, these are the different areas that we would think about when we code pneumonia. So talking about the origin, community, or hospital or ventilator associated, mostly it's going to be community or hospital. Um, healthcare associated is a term that can be coded but isn't always helpful, particularly as uh, the way that we treat healthcare associated um, shouldn't actually be very much different from community acquired. And if they're coming into the hospital uh, with it, um, then the healthcare association makes it a little bit unclear about whether it was acquired within the hospital or outside, whilst community makes it very clear the patient acquired that infection outside of the hospital and it's coded and funded very differently from hospital acquired. The etiology, whether it's viral, bacterial or fungal, is probably something we don't document enough. Um, the syndrome, so a lot of the time we're talking about lobar pneumonia, uh, but you can talk about bronchopneumonia and bronchitis. If it's anything less than that, upper respiratory tract infections, for example, they're likely not going to require admission, so I haven't covered them there. A lot of what we're going to be dealing with is going to be bronchopneumonia or lobar pneumonia. Linking it with an underlying uh, lung disease as an exacerbation, an effective exacerbation of that condition is really important, and that adds to complexity and an accurate representation of that patient's uh, presentation. Then listing, when you've documented these things, the investigations associated, um, the resistance, if known, always adds complexity. Uh, we don't always have cultures, but a lot of these patients do have sputum cultures, which is the highest uh, yield culture you can do in a patient with pneumonia. Uh, what kind of treatment was utilized uh, and the complications. To be honest, the investigations and the treatment are things that we usually document pretty well. Uh, but the resistance, I would say, is something that I almost never document and didn't realize until doing this work, that that can make a big difference. Um, not the sensitivity, just the resistance. And then the complications, things like you know septic shock, delirium, um, aspiration, things like that that are caused directly from the pneumonia itself. So if you've got a principal diagnosis of pneumonia or of COPD as an exacerbation, you can add different lung conditions. Each of these that are listed here will add a point to complexity. And within pneumonia, there's really two complexities, minor and major and adding only one of these will easily move that category from minor to major and that usually doubles the funding. Realistically, in a lot of our hospitals, most of our uh, pneumonia presentations and exacerbations of COPD are actually major in complexity, but we are missing out a lot on that complexity because of limitations in our documentation. And that's what we're trying to improve through this education is actually get accurate uh, coding of these encounters. So um, whether it be uh, heart failure, various kinds, uh, acute pulmonary edema, pulmonary hypertension, core pulmonale, all of those conditions, if they're there at the same time as the C pneumonia or the COPD exacerbation, they add to complexity. Likewise, we've got complications or related conditions. Each of these, if the pneumonia or COPD is the primary diagnosis, will add complexity, bringing it up to major complexity. 
So let's talk about certainty for a second because sometimes you'll have a diagnosis and you're pretty certain about it because there's been investigation or clinically it's pretty clear cut and the differentials are unlikely. Sometimes there's things where you're going, well, it could be this, but I'm not completely certain. There's ways that we can still code for those um, issues, even if we're not completely certain, even at diagnosis. So you can use different terms to express that degree of clinical suspicion, things like probable, where you're pretty certain that that's what it is, but not completely um, certain. The suspected or likely, where you're saying, okay, not, not as you know, highly likely, but it's, it's, we're reasonably certain this is the direction that we're going in. And in some way you're saying, I'm not actually sure at all, you might actually put query or a question mark. Those are the different terms that we can use. I think we do use some of that um, in documentation, but we could use that better. Uh, and then so many of those conditions, even when they're suspected or queried, can actually still be coded whilst they're being worked up. So here's some examples in terms of complexity. If you were to document infective exacerbation of COPD re with respiratory failure, that will give you minor complexity. That's about three and a half thousand dollars. If you document the same thing, and instead of writing respiratory failure, you write chronic type one respiratory failure, or acute on chronic, I should say, that suddenly moves it into major complexity. That specificity of the type of respiratory failure rather than respiratory distress, which is a symptom, adds to the complexity in that situation. Let's look at another one. Same issue, infective exacerbation of COPD caused by pneumonia. Well, that's just an infection. You're you know, really just classifying the syndrome that's causing it. That's minor complexity, three and a half thousand dollars. If you then actually state the etiology of the pneumonia as a viral pneumonia or bacterial, that will increase it up into major complexity and that's $7,700. That's a big difference. Lastly, here's one, hopefully you don't see this too often because staphylococcus pneumonia is pretty severe. If you were just to say pneumonia due to staphylococcus, that is a minor complexity, um, slightly more than the others, but that's $4,250. If you were to say that this is pneumonia due to staphylococcus and it's MSSA, we know it's resistant to standard penicillins, Pneumonia, due to staphylococcus, resistant to penicillin, just mentioning a resistance pattern that's proven gives it major complexity and that doubles the income in that instance. A lot of the time this is the case, but we're missing out on that coding and so we're being underfunded for these encounters. So just to summarise what we've done, we've talked about getting specific with our terminology and how that unlocks accurate and quality documentation and therefore coding. We've talked about the intricacies of pneumonia and some of the common terminology moving from non-specific to specific and codable conditions and diagnoses and adding underlying lung conditions and complications as complexity markers. And lastly, we've talked about diagnostic certainty and how to express that in medical documentation. Thanks for listening and good luck when you're coding respiratory conditions.